Hey guys, this is a quick tutorial about finding the view matrix, uh, particularly in Assault Cube, but certainly uh, this technique applies to other games as well. Uh, so, what is a matrix? A matrix is a 4x4 four four array of floats. Um, that's what a matrix is. It contains the left axis, the up axis, the forward axis, and this translation bit. Uh, there's three different matrices uh, involved in 3D gaming programming. There is a model matrix, a model view matrix, and a projection matrix. And what you'll find is that what you are looking for is all three of those matrices multiplied together, uh, called the model view projection matrix. Uh, that's what I believe in Source Engine uh, is referred to as view matrix. Uh, if you look at the Salt Cube source code, they actually call it the MVP matrix, the model view protection matrix. So that's what we're looking at. Now, these left, up, and forward axes are a little different for, than what you might be thinking of. Uh, if we look in a Salt Cube here, uh, when you're talking about angles and calculating angles, angles for your aimbot, uh, you can refer to pitch as being uh, between negative 90 and positive 90 degrees if you uh look all the way straight down you're at, at negative 90 if you look straight ahead you're at zero and if you're looking all the way up you are at positive 90 so that's 180 degrees in total and we all know the circle has 360 degrees so if you turn around you see negative 90 positive 90 so that's uh both sides of that circle and if you are looking straight ahead right now uh, when we're talking about uh, yaw, we are looking at uh, zero, and we are going to slowly turn from left to right, and we're slowly increasing from zero to 360. As we approach all the way to 360, it actually never reaches 360. It's going to turn back to zero. Um, so that's a way of talking about these angles and that representation, but in a model uh, in a matrix, the way that it's represented is uh, on some of these axes is being between uh, negative 1 and 1. So when we're talking about pitch again, if we look all the way straight down, that's negative 1.0 uh, float. And if we look all the way straight up, that's going to be positive 1.0 uh, as a float. So how do I know this? Uh, I know this because people have told me this in the past. Uh, I've seen it posted uh, elsewhere on the internet. Also, if you are reversing a game and you ha you already have the matrix using an offset up or whatever it may be, load that matrix up in reclass, load it up in Sheet Engine, whatever you have, and just look at it, experiment with it, try to figure out the different properties of it, which uh, we'll get into in a minute. So, what do we want to do? We want to load up Cheat Engine, we want to look straight up, uh, and we know that straight up is going to be positive 1.0 as a float. So, we need to attach to uh, a solid cube, and we want to do our first scan. We want it to be a float, we want it to be uh, rounded by default, and remember, we want it to be positive uh, 1. So what you want to do is add some precision to this because uh, the values you find are rounded. So we just want to make sure we know it's exactly 1.0F guaranteed because we're looking all the way straight up. So do the first scan and we get a lot of results, uh, about 100,000. So now let's go back to the salt cube. Let's look all the way straight down. And now this is going to be negative 1.00000 and do the next scan. And then we're just going to do that. Uh, just repeat that uh, positive one and then you see we have six, 76 results which is uh, pretty good but let's do a negative 1.000 again make sure we're looking all the way straight down and then next scan again so now we have 31 results let's just keep going I think we can get it down to just a couple uh, positive 1.00 and that's 29 and now negative one point whatever so now we have 29 addresses that's pretty good um, we have two static addresses as well let's take a look um, at those so if you select the address and press control B that's gonna 
uh, pull up the memory viewer and it's going to look at it uh, on the bottom pane, which is the hexadecimal representation of the memory. Uh, also, you can just click uh, browse this memory region. So now we have just a bunch of hex here, a bunch of crap. We can go to display type and we can set it as float. And now we are seeing all the values as float. Now you see uh, this is where we're at right here. We do see a positive one, which is what we're looking at. We have some other values that seem like uh, legit float values. Um, scroll down, we can see some things are changing here. Now we're not moving our view in a salt cube at all, so nothing should be changing. So when you don't move your uh, mouse, uh, nothing should be changing so these all look good up here so we will get into that in a second so now we basically we think we're looking at a matrix here up on the top side of that uh, memory pane in green and when we move our mouse around we see that all those things change we do see some addresses don't change at all and others do um, <clears throat> So another thing we can do is, and that's good, we want them to, to change. If those addresses weren't changing, that's not our correct matrix. So um, if we scroll up, we see uh, this is just a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of zeros. It's just padding. We scroll down, we see more zeros, more padding. So it looks like we have a uh, matrix here, but what we... What we can see is that, uh, remember, matrix is 4 by 4, so we have... Oops. We have a row of four, a second row of four, three, four. So there's a matrix. Well, what's all this other stuff? Um, you know, could that be another matrix? Could this be another matrix? We don't know. Uh, me, with past experience with Cellcube, I know that there are three or four matrices in a row there. We know that this has nothing to do with our uh, matrix. This is God knows what. And we scroll down more padding. So... It's just interesting to see what's around those uh, down around these variables. So where do we go from here? Because we positive one, negative one, that may not be the first uh, variable in the matrix. Uh, if, you know, one thing to understand is that between OpenGL and DirectX, uh, OpenGL is, I believe, it's column major. So the the way it gets the way it works is the first vector is uh, a column, the second vector is a column, the third vector is a column, the fourth vector is a column, and this is a vector with four values. But I believe in uh, DirectX that it's row major, meaning that the left axis is going to be across, the up is going to be across here, and forward across here, and translation on the bottom. Uh, really, it's up to the game developer how they want to do it, but that's generally uh, the convention that's being used. So let's go back to Cheat Engine. Um, where do we go from here? We kind of have to figure out which one of these things is the actual matrix. So let's open up the dissect data structure. This will aid us in doing this. Let's define a new structure. Now let's delete this one first. Delete structure. Yes. Define new structure. Yes. Call it a matrix. Uh, do we want it to fill in? Yes, we do. What size do we want it to be? We want to do 16 floats times 4 bytes each. So that is 64 bytes. And then we will select all of those. We're going to go to change element. We want these all to be floats, and we do not want them to be hex. So there we go. We have a uh, matrix of uh, 16 floats right there. So that's good right there so remember we want to, we can just plug in anything we want here now so 0x501 AA4 um, is going to be that's a 0 so we gotta add 4 to it and offset it here so does this looks like uh, our matrix uh, possibly another good tool uh, so what you can do is grab each one of these addresses that you think is the beginning and plug it in here and check it. Does it make sense? Um, another thing we can do is use reclass. Um, let me just zero this out here. And what you want to do is edit a new class. Uh, let's attach to AC client. And let's plug in that same address again. So 501AA4. And remember, we want to add 4 to that to get away from that zero. That, uh, zero. 
Uh, so there it is. And what we can do is go to modify and set the first address to a matrix. Uh, that's why this is nice uh, <coughs> in reclass. Uh, and then just expand this and boom, there you go. Uh, that's a much nicer way of looking at it. And again, we can just kind of confirm that this is working the way we want it to. Move your mouse around and you can see everything changes. Um, and you can see uh, on the third row, there are two values that don't change at all when you only move the mouse. Well, if we move our position, we now see those two things changing. So those pertain to our position, not to our um, angle. So, excuse me, let's, uh, again, we're still not sure what's going on here. Let's just add some more data. We can look at everything we want to as a matrix um, and just see what's going on. So let's pretend that there's three matrices here. Um, let's see, can we find the negative one and the positive one? We do see positive one in that second matrix uh, in reclass. And when we, oops, if we look all the way down, we will see it turn to negative one. You see what we're talking about right here? Um, so this looks like our matrix right here. Um, 501AE8. Uh, these, again, we do see a one here and a one here. So that's curious. Uh, we have two things that look like decent matrices. What else do we have in Cheat Engine? Um, we can go to some of these other addresses and see what we have. Again, Control B to uh, view it again. And see, these things are changing and we're not moving the mouse, so that's not correct. We are looking at this. Uh, it doesn't really look like matrix to me. I see a negative one and a positive one. Let's move our mouse around. Okay, we do see that moving. So that's curious. Um, but I like kind of like the idea of having these static addresses. I don't know about you. And also, as we get up here in the address range, we're getting out of um, the game's memory. You know, this is still in the same process, but there's other modules loaded, and certainly it's usually kernel modules, I believe, loaded at this high, uh, up high. Remember, uh, what we can do is go to memory view, uh, tools, dissect PE headers, and we see that the start of this module is, the, is at hex 400,000. And then these are just getting way out there. But just out of curiosity, uh, let's take this address. Let's look at go to address on this top pane. And now we're going to see um, that no module is listed in this address uh, range. And we have show module addresses checked. So if we were to, let's say, go to 0x 400,000 in hex, uh, we would see that these are all offset from that module. Um, so these addresses are not even in uh, the assault cube executable. So let's stick with this first thing we have here um, that looked pretty good. And again, once I get to this point, I just like to use reclass. It's easier for me to visualize it. Uh, it does appear we have three matrices. This one is 501AE8. That I'm thinking that's our good one. Let's take a look just to give you an idea of what this looks like in the source code. Uh, this is the assault cube source code right here. And let's look for uh, geometry.h um, and then glmatrixf. This is our structure for the matrix in this game. Uh, it's 16 floats in an array uh, in a structure called GLmatrix F. Now, if we do, uh, if we search for GLmatrix F in the entire solution, uh, we will eventually get to the to the definition of the matrices. So here we go. This is where they are defined. It's one, two, three, four, five matrices all in a row. Uh, also, some other variables that have that uh, relate to our to the calculation of a matrix and any of the 3D math that's going to be going on. So another thing you might want to do is uh, you can get your position of your character and then you can try to find it in memory in other places beside your local player and then uh, look around it for the matrix. 
Uh, just real quick though, let's look. Um, we have one matrix, we have two matrix, we have three matrix. And it did say that there are one, two, three, four, five matrices in a row. Let's just go back to Cheat Engine here, um, back to this one, browse this memory region. We had, oops, let me just, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's four matrices and then a possibly a fifth. Yeah, it's possible. So that kind of, it makes sense. It adds up to the source. Of course, you're not always going to have the source, but it's a good way uh, just to understand the concept. So if we just open up my old, um, my X, I'm sorry, my internal assault queue pack from, uh, <clears throat> A while ago we can see that my pointer that I was using I'm sorry the matrix I was using it was a static address it was 501 a e8 now let's go back to this and we can see that that is the matrix that's the one I had said was correct just because I I remember what it looks like so that's the one how can you test this well get your world to screen uh, function and uh, you know you have all your information for your aimbot just uh, put that all together use that matrix if it doesn't work then you know that's not the matrix for you I know my world of screen works 100% so I can just plug addresses into it and when it works then I know that my address is right so honestly I would probably start by plugging this one in and it wouldn't work and then I plug this one in and then all of a sudden boom everything works great so <clears throat> let's just that's one way to do it. Uh, certainly, there are other ways to do it. Let's talk about, remember, that uh, our world position, a vector world position, was located next to our matrix. Now, that's uh, probably pretty common, um, or not. So, But let's just test that theory out. Uh, let's load up my old salt cube cheat table, and we know that this is my x um position right here so what we can do is do a search for that new scan as a flow and we're going to search for it and we get these addresses so not very not a lot to pick from again we can see 501 bd8 uh or b98 <laughs> That's actually right down here, 16489, 16489. That's what we're looking for. Uh, 154, that's our Y, and who cares about the Z? So that appears to be our world position, and then our matrix is right here, which relates 100% to the source code. Um, so there you go. That's kind of how you do it. 